This is Dennis Ramundi with the Coffee League, uh, where we discuss all things related to coffee. Follow me on Instagram at the Coffee League. Uh, my guest today is Gabriella Runison. She is from uh, the city of Gothenburg, where she started a roastery uh, uh, recently. We'll talk more about that. But uh, uh, I wanted to mention that today I went to one, one of my favorite cafes uh, in Sweden, Alchemy, which is in Gothenburg. And uh, I've interviewed the owner there. I've interviewed a gentleman named Anthony, who is uh, a barista there. His last name, Nugian. I, I won't pronounce it correctly. It's Vietnamese. But uh, I love the place. Uh, and I met there. Gabriella today and was introduced to me and she was telling me about uh, the roastery she started recently and I said hey let's have her on the show let's talk about uh, what's going on in Gothenburg and and uh, what it's like to start a roastery I've had a lot of people on talking about starting cafes but fewer people talking about the roasting end of it so Gabriella thank you so very much for taking the time to talk thank with you me. for having me wonderful so let me it's let, my pleasure uh, let, let me ask you a question to begin yes. Uh, everybody has a journey that brings them into coffee. If you're going to be yeah. uh, working with specialty coffee, you probably had some path that brought you there. What was your journey like? How did you get uh, into specialty coffee? It was like for many other, I guess, just a coincidence. I was um, mm -hmm. uh, living and working in Oslo at a mm -hmm. coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And um, then I decided to move to Gothenburg uh, mm -hmm. and... I was looking at cafe jobs because that's all mm. the experience I had in like terms of working. Mm. So I just handed out CVs on cafes and my friend said like, oh yeah, I know this really nice cafe. We should go there. Uh, and so I did and I got an interview and I didn't even drink coffee actually. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so uh, the woman I was having the interview with asked me if I wanted coffee and I said yes because I thought it would be I'm polite to say no. Uh, mm -hmm. And I ended up getting the job. Uh, and then it turned out to be so much more than just a cafe job. Uh, and I got stuck for, yeah, six years now. Uh -huh. I've been a specialty. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. And, now have <laughs> and I you... learned how to like coffee. So right. now and, I like coffee. And, and, and you know, there's uh, various areas of coffee one can work in. The, the yes. area most people are familiar with is the barista because you walk into a cafe and that's the woman or man that you run into and that person usually talks to and, and uh, makes the, uh, the, the desired drink that you request and you go from there. Uh, what you don't see is uh, often is, in some places you see it, but it's, it's less apparent, is the person uh, in the back room or in another building often and they're actually roasting the beans. And, and, and uh, coffee, you know, from the time it... It, 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 it is picked off, the, you know, to the time it's, the, you know, the coffee is planted in the ground to the time it is harvested and dried and all the steps it can go through. A lot of things can go wrong and a lot of things can go right. And certainly <laughs> one of the key areas is the roasting. Uh, at what point did you uh, go from being a barista or whatever, that end of it, to actually roasting? Um. I worked as a barista for a couple of years uh, and then I started managing one of the cafes uh, and then I actually kind of decided to quit so I went traveling but when I was away traveling uh, Christian uh, one of the guys who I have the roaster with uh, emailed me and asked me if I wanted to start in the uh, working in the roastery with him uh, and uh, yeah I couldn't say no to that offer uh, so uh, yeah I said yes and I came back to Sweden and I mm -hmm. started roasting with him and uh, Marcus the other guy who has the roastery with now right uh, uh, and, and the three of you were working for a company a, a, a roastery and also a cafe Damateo which is exactly. uh, got a, quite a significant presence in Gothenburg and, and they're really uh, you know top-notch uh, so uh, if you learned to work there I'm sure that you had uh, uh, very, very good training. And I should also mention that Steve Maloney, who I've had on the show a couple of times, who was a two-time U.S., I mean, Swedish barista champion, uh, he was uh, running education at Da Mateo and also, uh, I guess, uh, uh, training baristas there. So, the, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's actually kind of me and Marcus who forced him to move to Gothenburg. Uh -huh. So, yeah. <laughs> That's funny because he was, a, a, again, he was originally from Australia. 
Now, yeah. uh, I, uh, here's a question I have I'm curious about. I, I would yeah. think that the, there's a big personality difference often between a barista and a roaster because a barista is almost like um, a bartender. You're out there, you're directly interacting with people. I would rather be a barista than a bartender because uh, if you're a bartender, the more people drink, the duller and sloppier they get. Uh, if you're a barista, <laughs> yes. the more coffee they drink, the more alert, the more energetic uh, they get. That's my, my, my observation anyway. That's true. Uh, uh, so the people that do that end of it, and you've done that end of it, uh, you, yeah. you generally have to be somewhat extroverted and like talking to people and listening to people and all that. Whereas a roaster, uh, more quietly by themselves, maybe with uh, other people that they're roasting with, but it's a little bit quieter, more introverted type that's drawn to that. Would you agree? Yes and no, because okay. I think as well. It, of course, it depends on like the size of the company you're working with. But mm -hmm. as a roaster, you communicate with like the customers to the roastery. Right. So you communicate with all the uh, cafes that you're selling coffee to, and in the ways I've been working with in the roastery, and mm -hmm. uh, how we do it now is that we have a lot of contact with our customers because they are the most important thing to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have uh, workshops and we keep very close contact with the people we're working with. So mm -hmm. then you're kind of social, but towards that end of the chain and the uh, producer end of the chain, like having relationships and everything with the producers and with the uh, importers and everything. So. I always said yes and no. Maybe that's not as like super right. extrovert mm -hmm. towards like every day, but you need to be like a real social person, mm -hmm. but in uh, other ways of the chain. Right. And, and, so, and, and I would definitely also say like that's, I would say there's every kind of, of roaster, like right. every personality type. Right. And I've yeah. certainly experienced that. That, uh, and, and then there are some baristas I know that are very good, but very, they don't say much. Uh, and, yeah. and, and some do. Uh, what do you prefer if, if given a choice? Do you, is roasting your favorite end of the business? Roasting and I still like the meeting people part. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think more and more I'm leaning more towards like the education, education, the like, uh, customer service towards our customer in the roastery and not on a mm -hmm. daily basis in the bar. Uh, mm -hmm. So more like out meeting people, but the people we are working with that are to, yeah, that are working with our coffee and to meet with them and see mm -hmm. what they are like and how they work and how they want to work with our coffee and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Right. So kind of a mix, like I still like talking to people and that mm -hmm. but uh i also love the roasting part right okay so tell, so tell us about it <laughs> so some people that listen to my podcast are roasters they're they're or they're coffee nerds and know all this inside out other people it's, it's fairly new to for me i'm a yeah. journalist i'm learning about it i know a little bit about it uh but what what skill is involved what is what uh, what are, if you have somebody come in and you're going to train them as a roaster what are the things they need to learn to be able to do the job well? I think like one of the most important things that I've learned from Christian and Marcus, because they are the one who has mm -hmm. been teaching me. Uh, I mean, Christian trained Marcus and then I get in and they both trained me. So I think, and what I've learned and more and more come to realize is very true is that it's so much about like understanding and relationships with like the sourcing and the producer mm -hmm. uh, and as long as the relationships and your understanding about the coffee and the chain and how people work before you get the coffee and you source really good coffee and have mm -hmm. great relationships the whole roasting part isn't that hard mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think it's mostly about the understanding about how everything works and the sourcing and all of that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, well, tell us tell us about the sourcing because that's obviously extremely important and and it involves relationships and 
uh, and, and, and when you source something and you, you get it, uh, is there a way of testing it when you first get it to make sure you're getting the quality that you want or there are certain sources you get it from, you just absolutely know it's going to be top quality every time? Both. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it always goes up and down. Uh, one season it can be like the best coffee I've ever had and the next season uh, a lot of things can make that change so maybe the next season is not as good and for us the most important part is to have like a really great relationships with the people we're working with mm -hmm. um, so for us it's important to find the producers that we want to work with and that want to works with us want to mm -hmm. work with us and that you have kind of the same mindset as and the understanding and the feeling that we are doing something great together here mm -hmm. uh, and to stay with them whether it's the best coffee you ever had or not the best coffee you ever had right. but still a good coffee mm -hmm. uh, so to not just always pick the absolute most fabulous coffees, but to build relationships and right. to support the producers even when uh, the crop isn't the best they've ever had mm -hmm. uh, and still be there when it is the best mm -hmm. you ever had. Mm -hmm. okay. um, mm -hmm. I, I also wanted to ask uh, the, the three of you, Christian Marcus and yourself, Gabriella, yeah. you, you, start, you started a new uh, roastery. Now, you know, in, in there's drop coffee. They're very good. There's Damateo, There's Kopi, and uh, I think that's how it's pronounced. K O P P I in uh, in Helsingborg. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's there's a lot of good uh, stuff be, uh, being produced by different roasters. How are you guys going to be different? What do you bring to the table to the market that's maybe new or different? And what excites you about getting into it? What excites us is how much we love coffee and mm -hmm. roasting and the relationships with the producers. Mm -hmm. And uh, to have like all these other roasteries in just in Sweden, there are so many good roasteries. Right. Uh, that is just great, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, to learn from each other and right. to work together and keep pushing each other to always be right. better. Um, but we want to focus we're on like the relationships in mm. all the different ways like to the customers to the producer and everything in between so we already roasted uh, i mean together we have more than 25 years of experience so the whole like roastery part we feel like we have <laughs> have it under right. control uh, and that means we can put most of our focus on all the relationships, whether it's with the producers and getting to know them and have a deeper relationship with them uh, or our customers or the people drinking our coffee all the time, whether mm -hmm. it's in a cafe or at home or whatever. Uh, so that is what we feel like we can put our most effort in now and just like make more people drink good coffee and mm -hmm. do it in an easy, fun way. Mm -hmm. and, and what countries will you source from? Uh, we're working with six, six countries to start with. Uh, so we have uh, Brazil, Costa Rica, mm -hmm. El Salvador, Kenya, Ethiopia, and Colombia. Wow. Uh, All great places and, for coffee. Uh, yeah. Uh, meet my case. <laughs> I can think of uh, coffee I've had yeah, to meet to those a good, places. It's a spending, broad yeah. spread. Like in mm -hmm. those countries, you can find any kind of coffee you like. And we're, of course, working very based on season. So we're not going to have all those coffees all the time. We really mm -hmm. want to stay in season and have, because that's something, at least in Sweden, people are not familiar with the fact that coffee is something that needs to right. be fresh and not always available from all countries. So that's something we want to showcase as well, that it's actually something that you should buy in season for it to taste as good as possible. Right. Uh, so we really want to stay in season, So, but still have those six great countries to mm -hmm. work with. And do you, do you do only single origin or do you also do a blend or blends? Right now we just do single origins. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll see what happens in the future. Uh, never say never. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's, uh, yeah, it's always a discussion about blends and everything. Right. But I mean, if it, if it tastes good, then you should do a blend. Right, right. But uh, right now we're not doing it. And mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we have a new roaster and everything, still trying to figure everything out. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Who, who we'll might you, <laughs> you have? You have some uh, cafes that you can mention that you are or will be supplying in the near future or now, uh, or you want to hold off on that until you get things rolling? No, we're, we have uh, a lot of people already. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I mean, we shipped, I think, to um, around 20 countries already or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, and it's actually mostly abroad, uh, mm -hmm. more than in Sweden. And how, how do you uh, solicit business? Sorry? How do you get new customers? Do they just hear about you or what did you It's both. Uh, I you, mean, considering... Yeah, you come into the business with experience, so you know people, right? Yeah, so... Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, people are always interested in new roasteries. Uh, so I guess when you start a new roastery, a lot of people hear about you and they contact you. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's a way as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and also we have a lot of contacts that mm -hmm. we have gathered through the years. Great. Uh, Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I want to. I want to both ways. Yeah, I also <laughs> want to mention Gabriella that the name of your roastery of your company is the Swedish word for morning, and I'll let yeah. you say it. So I don't say it incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in Swedish, you say morgon. 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 Yeah. <laughs> it seems no matter what my wife is from Gothenburg, she's Swedish. So yeah. whatever I and so I deal with her family and all. Whatever I say in Swedish. They always kind of laugh at it and, and they speak back to me in English. So the oh, pronunciation yeah. <laughs> is tough. But I, love but I it. think you did good. Yeah, yeah. I'm working on yeah. it. And, uh, <laughs> and I have to say, uh, for people listening to my podcast from all over, uh, uh, many, many countries, and uh, uh, I, I want to say that Scandinavia, you know, Sweden, uh, Denmark, uh, uh, Norway, uh, another Nordic country, Finland, uh, a lot of. Uh, Great coffee, what we call third wave coffee. Really, uh, this is uh, in many ways its birthplace, along with, you know, maybe the northwest of the United States, uh, Seattle, Portland, Stumptown, those companies, Intelligentsia, La Coloma in the United States, and, and yeah. uh, uh, the sophistication and number. Gothenburg is a city of, a, a, you know, three, four hundred thousand. It's not that big, but there are so many good uh, cafes here. Uh, it's yeah. it, it actually, in terms of numbers, even though Stockholm is a much bigger city and have some great places, there's more. And and uh, Gabriella, before we came on the air, you mentioned to me uh, that our listeners know that you also work at a place aside from Alchemy. You've done work at uh, yeah. uh, Victor's, which is also in Gothenburg, and that's also one of my favorite places. And I know yeah. the owner. <laughs> and so you work. Uh, I, and, and having worked with Damateo, these are three places that have very very, very high level. Uh, uh, quality and I've been yeah. to probably 500 cafes this year, <laughs> so you know, I'm, 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 yeah, although not an expert in coffee, uh, a good consumer and, and know when it's good. And and uh, actually, what I had today was probably the best coffee I've had uh, in the last couple of months in Scandinavia. And I've had a lot oh. of good coffee, so it was really wonderful. And uh, and so, I'm so glad uh, to hear. Yeah, and and let yeah. me uh, <laughs> uh, uh, also ask uh, you'll be a roaster. Will you also uh, have your own cafe out of the roastery or in town or ever get into that end of it as well? So a lot of roasters do, a lot don't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, right now, there's no plans. Mm -hmm. um, we're still in the really, really beginning of this. We've only been roasting since June, so right. it's really new. So we'll see in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about it from time to time, but I think you need to find a really good way to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and do it in like a some kind of new way and something. As you said, there's a lot of great cafes mm -hmm. in Gothenburg and in Sweden and everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I think to get that going and for it to be like successful, you need to really put a lot of effort into it. And yeah, find something new and interesting to mm -hmm. make people come there. And it takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Right now, we don't really have time for it, but right. at I some point, plans. never say never. Never we'll say never. In the future. And, and uh, <laughs> you have um, in uh, might do you or might you have some customers in the United States? Uh, we've had uh, a place called Port Cleveland. Mm -hmm. They've had a coffee coffee a couple of times, and um, I think. 
that's it. Well, when I, when I we get... had a couple of uh, uh, in a web shop. Mm-hmm. We have a couple of people um, mm-hmm. uh, buying some there. Um, well, when I, when I'm back in the United States in a couple of weeks, and I'll be yeah, here for a while. Yeah, you should go to Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, no, and also let me. I, I'm happy to introduce you to uh, cafes that I know are always looking for new stuff, new coffee. So of course, be that would be to, great. Because a, a yeah. lot of a lot of this business is uh, networking. Okay, so you're exactly. starting out now. It's a very exciting time for you. You're yeah. you have your own company, your own business. You have two partners in it. Uh, where do you see yourself, uh, yourself, and your business in five years? Five years. Um, the business. We talked a lot about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want to have. We want to travel to origin mm-hmm. a lot uh, and uh, really get those relationships uh, and keep meeting new people, but also to just like make those relationships even greater and mm-hmm. uh, become closer to everyone we're working with. Um, so that's something we really want to focus on and mm-hmm. hopefully we'll be doing more in the upcoming years. Um, and myself, mm-hmm. I would say, I don't know. I I still want to be in this company, of course. Right. Uh, that's how I see myself. But uh, also maybe, I don't know. I, prob- I will probably have a lot of dogs. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the plan is to have like a roastery and a, a dog. Yeah. Well, do, you, do, you have, do, you have a, do you have a dog now? How many dogs do you have now? No, I don't. Marcus has one, okay. uh, which is amazing because she's uh-huh. with us in the roastery and everything. Uh, but it's not far away. Uh, and uh, yeah, so Great. it's going to be at least one dog. That, that, that Maybe is, two. The, the, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And, and, and then uh, the other question. We're not sure how Christian feels about this whole uh-huh. roastery slash dog uh, breeding yeah. place, but it's going to work well, out. The, the, what to do is have <laughs> one dog at a time, and at some point he'll get attached and fall in love with one of the dogs. Exactly. And then that's exactly. how it usually works. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, one other question, and that is, are there uh, people in the industry who have been mentors or you know, people that have inspired you that you've learned from, uh, or even people that maybe you didn't study directly with, but you look up to for the quality of work that they do? Of course, yeah. um, mostly Christian and Marcus, for mm-hmm. sure, uh, which make, makes this even better that I get to work with the two mm-hmm. people that inspire me the most in mm-hmm. coffee uh, and that taught me everything I know, I would say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so definitely Christian and Marcus. Uh, but I also have some other amazing like baristas, coffee people that I really look up to, mm-hmm. like Taylor Brown, who has... Uh, roastery donut shop in uh, Oslo, former mm-hmm. head roaster at Tim Vanderbilt. Mm-hmm. She's amazing, doing amazing things. Uh, and uh, Michaela, uh, mm-hmm. that we talked about before at we, Coffee we, Collective. We've had, on, we've had uh, her on the show. And, exactly. Uh, terrific, yeah. 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 And not talking about our current World Barista Champion. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Steve Maloney. She's amazing. Oh, no. And, and, no, uh, no, no. Who is oh, the... yeah, Steven, of course. Oh, Steve, the... of course, as well. You're talking about, <laughs> you're talking about the woman from Poland? Exactly. Yeah, yeah you pronounce uh, her name. And by the way... Agnieszka. My... Yeah, Agnieszka. For my listeners, I've been in regular contact with her. And she's been, I mean, in China and Japan, all over the place. So I will have her on. She's fantastic. And, uh, uh, and really, uh, uh, on top... Yeah, I really... Burning through these uh, competitions, she's <laughs> yeah. uh, unbeatable. And and uh, one of the things I've, I've wanted to feature is uh, and, uh, is women in coffee. And yeah, and they're, they're, you know uh, that as well. I need to mention uh, Sonia Svedek yep. as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's living in Denmark now. Right. Uh, she started the Barista Connect for uh, women mm-hmm. in coffee. Right. Um, yeah, uh, she had a, and that's a, a great thing as yeah. well. They had a, uh, yeah. That's how I got connected to Mikhail. I was first in touch with Sonia. She had yeah. some personal things come up, so we haven't done the interview yet. But And I also had a woman on, uh, Celine uh, Lazarus, I think, Selena Lazarus from Australia, who's a green coffee buyer, who spoke at that conference. And then I had uh, two women in America that run conferences on women in coffee. Uh, yeah. One was Erica, uh, Erica, and I can't think of her name, last name, from New York, and another woman in uh, Denver. 
And then I also interviewed the woman who's the founder of an organization called Strong Women in Coffee. So, yeah. uh, and uh, she's out of Canada. So uh, a lot, uh, those barriers are being broken and we're seeing more and more women in these competitions doing phenomenally well. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So it's about uh, time. Yeah. It's about There's time. There's so many great women out there. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. And as much yeah. as possible, we'd like to feature that. Uh, any, any final points you'd like to make or anything final you'd like to say to our listeners? <laughs> you could tell us your website for one thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we have a, a website. It's uh, morgoncoffeeroasters.com. Uh, spell, and Morgan... spell that, especially for our American listeners who never spell anything correctly. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, M O R G O N. G O N. And then coffee, coffee roasters. Say, M -A -M, say spell it again. M O R G O N. M O. Yeah. I'll have this all posted up, by the way. Yeah, you should. And then it's coffee roasters, which mm -hmm. I think people should be able to spell. Absolutely. So it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll do that. And, and, and again, uh, uh, education uh, is a big part of, uh, of coffee because I encounter so many people who um, started out uh, drinking at Starbucks or Espresso House or, and got like a chocolate mocha, whatever. And then they started actually experiencing the coffee. And then they started drinking pour overs. And so there's much subtlety and uh, people should drink whatever they like, but there's much more to coffee, I would say, uh, that, than uh, meets the eye. And, and what is your yeah. coffee consumption in a day like? What's an average day for you in terms of coffee oh, consumption? I would say if I have a day off, mm -hmm. I would say I only drink like one. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I work... It's a lot more, but uh -huh. it's a lot more like taking a sip here, right, putting the coffee right. down, doing something, right. uh, taking another sip, oh, make a new one, mm -hmm. here's another one. So it's not often that I actually go through like a whole cup of coffee in peace and quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think I don't drink as much coffee as one would think. No, it is a lot working of, in coffee. Yeah, hey, hey, look, there's a lot of people in coffee. I mean, it's very, very common. Many, many people have one cup a day. I usually yeah. have three or four, uh, yeah. but uh, I'm not working. I mean, I'm covering coffee and I, I go to a lot of cafes. So when I go to a cafe, I have to, you know, obviously have some coffee. So yeah. that increases my consumption, but whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever. But whatever I still need it. Like mm -hmm. I need it in the morning. Right. For sure. I, yeah. Otherwise I get a headache. Great, great way yeah. to start the day. And now <laughs> there are many studies finding out that uh, coffee has uh, tremendous health benefits. And I think especially if you're drinking high uh, like you, what, what you roast, what you make, the high quality coffee that's properly sourced. It's, it's a wonderful yeah. thing. Um, Gabriela, thank you so very much for your time. And thank I you. encourage people to go to the website. We'll have it, it's posted up on the blog and, uh, and check it out. And, uh, uh, and also, um, uh, if you want to contact uh, Morgan Coffee uh, Roasters directly, go ahead and do that. And, uh, yeah. and then we'll, we'll, uh, We'll keep you posted, and maybe uh, a year from now, or six months from now, or whenever the company's yeah. rolling, we'll we'll have uh, you or one of your uh, partners on the show, and we'll talk some more. Yeah, of great. course. All that right. sounds great. Thank you very much yeah. for your time. Thank you so much. Right. Great. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Great.